oh hey how are you guys doing oh you know what sorry yeah let me do that first oh yeah. hey, how are you guys doing oh, oh thank oh, I'm you sorry. it's getting a little little hot in here oh so hot <laughs> so hot oh. oh my god you're wearing oh, it all tonight. i've been terrible Almost. i didn't even oh, get my uh, own yet <laughs> that's right let me get down in there just lots of just lots of tentacles there right <laughs> you know i thought it was weird that they put the image on the string part of the string bikini, but um no it totally works you know so i realized something i realized something uh you need to get one of the you need to get that image but as a mask what the 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 the, the, the cathedral the head Oh, the shirt design? Yeah. Actually, oh, yeah. Or do you want me to make, I can always just cut it, crop, crop out the Cthulhu head and make that a mask. I have all that artwork. Just have a tentacle the mask. Next episode yeah. is just going to be, be so terrible. Cool. <laughs> I have enough <laughs> nightmares. Andre has enough nightmares right now. I don't need more. <laughs> that is a natural 20. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, if you weren't able to tell already, you are at Murder Global <laughs> Inc., where we are playing Cred again tonight. I did not realize, but last time we played uh, uh, was a one year anniversary for Cred. We what? actually, yeah. We've hit a year? We yeah. are over a year. We are uh, a year and a day now. I didn't even uh, realize that. And who better to celebrate I think that's than. Right. The three people who were there at the beginning. That's why Jake isn't here. We're actually not going to bring him on until much later. <laughs> Just want to spend time with you guys who have stuck stuck with us from the very beginning. You not know, those quitters like uh, uh, Cleo. Ugh. Yeah, and she, she, you know, you know. Yeah, I guess you know she's in chat. <laughs> she, and uh, get on and your horse, Cleo. Who was the other one get with Cleo? Here. What was his name? Jeremiah is still around. Jeremiah still around. I'm pretty yeah. sure. He, I'm pretty sure we just left him. <laughs> no, he's in. My, he's in my house. He's in. Yeah, he's, he's under his. I'm pretty uh, sure it's his house care. now. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's, he's been I'm there. Dead. He's been there longer. Yeah. <laughs> so it's probably true, him yes. and and um the the one grandfather and son. Whoa, whoa. man! I need to pull oh, up my, my notes. Goodness. So so Kyle, you are you? No, though for all the. For all the chat you're doing at her, she can yeah, has her assistant. sound off. That she has her sound off. She, she did not hear you be me. <laughs> well, she has to, you know, Twitter and tweet. Good and thing all that. we're not recording. Oh no. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. All right. <laughs> oh, it's so fun to chat with you guys. It feels like it's been forever, honestly. Uh well then let's. Get this party started! All right, follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our YouTube archives if you want to hit us up, play in one of our games. You can't do that this week, but you can do that next Saturday where we are going to have a one-shot. This week is campaign week where, of course, we have cred. We have Calamity, the Shake-Up crew. Um, I believe that has been put together and all that, so that's <coughs> not good. And then Margu on Sunday. Our, our other DM, Frank, is a busy man, as you might be able to tell. I, however, am not. I just get to lay about and be sick all day with COVID. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, what else? Yeah, if you want to talk to us, uh, uh, give me evil ideas on what to do with these players. You can hit us over on our Discord channel. Otherwise, uh, support our cool, wonderful stuff. We got the awesome products uh, over at uh Threadless or Threadbare? I never remember. Threadless. Threadless. Uh, honestly, uh, I can't find the threads to yank on these. Neither can my kids. Oh, we don't have it on tonight. Durable. Yeah, we don't, we don't have, have it, it on, on screen. You, you will have to, to pay attention thing. to the entire stream if you want to click and get this cool product here. here. Uh, that being said, even if it were the Calamity campaign on the back of this sweatshirt, I still probably would wear it because it is that comfortable. Uh, then we have our podcast. If you don't want to look at our faces, um, I can understand why. That is one of the reasons contractually that we have DJ in a mask is that he must <laughs> wear the mask uh, uh, if he's going to be on video. Um, it's weird that Carol was the one that brought it up, but... I didn't say anything about it. This is all his idea. The mask <laughs> is all his idea. You can find that over at Podbean at Murder Hobo Inc. 
where all of our podcasts are all lumped together so you can get every single good podcast deliciousness all in one bite without even having to worry about switching over. Next, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Pirate Dog Dice, for when you're rolling like poop. Like uh, like we've been rolling this whole fucking campaign. Except on red saves. <laughs> you know, guys, I think uh, things are finally looking up for you, for certain. Uh, I hope uh, so. But if not, then I would get the uh, expedient uh, Pirate Dog Dice dice. Uh, the ones where it's all 20s as fast as humanly possible. Otherwise, you're, you're screwed. Uh, <laughs> and then We'd like to thank Adventure Sense. Speaking of stinky games, Adventure Sense, uh, if you wanted to make it smell like an old library, a gastronomical <laughs> sewer of many wonders, or perhaps Carol's uh, crimson catalytic cholera fence post. That's it, cholera. Choleretic? Fence post, yeah. Oh, Jesus. I'm telling you, they're going to do the fundraiser on that. And it's going to be big out of this world i can tell you uh go and check out their games if you want to add that ninth dimension uh, uh the smelling dimension to your game um they have other products as well i'm doing this all off the top of my head and this feels like it has been forever i have trouble remembering we have the shine project uh that is a project if you're writing a fantasy story uh, the Shine Project is a great way to kind of fill in the blanks that you never really thought to ask yourself or fill in yourself and um, it works pretty well for uh, GMing as well. However, they are soon in the works of making a GMing one. So when that version of the Shine Project goes out, go fund it. It's, it's certainly worth it, uh, to say the very least. And I haven't even looked at it yet. Uh, how to RPG with your cat. Um, the acid test for cooking with Dungeons and Dragons. They've got a lot of projects over there. Take a look at that. Finally, uh, I want to introduce the only players who actually show up just about every single time. Because <laughs> we have no life, right? Because they have no life, in <laughs> other words. d and is life. It is. I'm Speaking with you. Speaking of which, Carol, why don't you introduce yourself and introduce your character? Uh what insanities have popped up and how much dread you have because that might be important tonight. Oh know. god, I have to look up how much dread I have. I'm not 100 percent sure at the moment. I don't one say your name and your character. Okay, 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 okay. okay. So, so multitask. Right. So the usual thing is hi, my name is Carol. Um, otherwise known as Muses Touch, uh, because I run my own Twitch stream for mini painting. Uh, but as I said I'm a longtime gamer, occasional GM, and of course said a commission mini painter. Um, and I, I'm in between the roles, which is our talk show, and I'm helping out in the big collaborative project where we're, we're, we're world building. And on this particular campaign, the Craig campaign, I play Anja Yeager, my, what am I? I'm a friggin' half elven ranger who has two insanities. Yeah, let me go through the list of conditions. In 30 years of playing, I've never had this many conditions. I have two insanities, and I think everyone's figured out I don't want to be touched. Oh, fuck, what's the other one? Blood. Uh, blood. Blood. Excess too blood. Too much blood, and I don't want to be touched. And uh, I also have a disease, <laughs> and I'm at two points of exhaustion that I can't recover with rest unless I make a save. I think that sums it up. And I have a big open wound, too, because that's where the disease came from. Absolutely. <sighs> My oh. character's having a great time in this dungeon. Now, as she says, I've never had this many conditions on my character before. Never. <laughs> he is the one who says killing a character would be too oh. easy. Oh, no, no. I didn't say this was... <laughs> I'm enjoying this. Me, the player, as a masochist to my characters, I'm enjoying this. And I think, uh, yeah, just sure kid, death is so much easier actually, than but this. Anyway. Whatever. All right, moving down to DJ. DJ, why don't you introduce yourself and your character? Uh, insanities and dread levels, if you don't mind. Yes, hello. I am DJ. Uh, just a gamer. GM. One of the normies out there. <clears throat> I play Bran. I play Bran, the Way of the Mercy monk, uh, and an 
who's been having a very bad time recently. Uh, Brad has doesn't really have an insanity. He has a rational hatred for ghouls. <laughs> Just get that straight. So totally rational hatred of ghouls. That tracks. I'm pretty sure that was irrational, but all right. No, 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 no. no, no. no. no, no. It, it makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense. It really does. <laughs> to be honest, I'm pretty sure a lot of players have the same level of hatred uh, uh, hatred for things without even having an insanity. Anyways, I am at one dread currently. All right. I'd like to say he's one of the normies. And then he puts on his, his BDM <laughs> mask. Thank God one of the normies here, of, guy. He's, thank God he's not really one of the normies. <laughs> he's way cooler this way. Normie. All right. <laughs> and finally, Ernie, who is trying to get everyone's characters to go down an even worse road. I'm no, I'm not a big fan of Cthulhu character. or anything. <laughs> um, okay, uh, yeah, so my name's Riley, the uh, warlock, who obviously as a warlock is already kind of half insane. So while I have two levels of dread, I think I'm only acting like one. Though after touching that um, golem that was in chains, I, I did get a little exhausted there. Um, but... <coughs> Now that I've seen this golem in action crush all these ghouls, which was pretty entertaining, um, he went behind sure this. Ghouls? I'm pretty humans. sure. Humans. humans. It, it destroyed However, statues of ghouls. Yes. It destroyed every ghoul effigy. Image. And yeah. humans, that's a new thing. So I am more interested because I thought it just had a thing against ghouls, but for some reason, I guess it has a thing against ghouls humans but not us so i'm gonna follow this thing behind this big giant door that it went behind and then maybe later chuck some bodies down lava tubes so i just want to say this personally i'm not the biggest fan of this episode but the lines are good the image of a ghoul is a ghoul oh yeah, yeah certain I, people know what that. You, I know i know what you're yeah i know where you are with that i had doctor that, <laughs> it's a doctor yeah it's talking about uh, yeah okay the weeping angels Oh, not the, the biggest fan of that. No. The image of Fednathoa. <laughs> it's no. true. It's actually very it's true. Bad fucking news. That's it's, what they um, don't it look creates. At it. it creates more mummies to throw down lava tubes. That's what it does. <laughs> so I'm actually really surprised. I'm really surprised he hasn't been watching Doctor Who because this is like totally that. Uh, I. Uh... <laughs> All right, it's it's past the one year anniversary, uh, but I'll, I'll share a DM secret. I am terrified of horror movies and anything <laughs> horrifying. Doctor Who, are you my mummy? Oh, you that is like that is the best. Me. That is one of the best episodes. And you're running a it's horror good, campaign. It's good, but it scares me, and I don't like it. <laughs> Kyle, why the hell are you running a horror campaign? Uh, Kyle, Kyle, watch Black, watch Midnight Mass. Oh, yes. I need to watch Midnight yes. Mass. And I'm, I'm planning on... Viewers, watch Midnight Mass. Hey. <laughs> I'm not getting paid for this endorsement. <laughs> I want to play. But I am Midnight Mass on Netflix. <laughs> you know what? I just messaged this to Kyle, but I realize everyone needs to hear this. If you haven't watched any Lucio Fulci <laughs> movies, he's a good Italian <laughs> horror director. Um made the famous movie Zombie, which was called, oh, I think, dear. Zombie 2 in the U.S. Um, there, Yeah, there, he had some good ones out there. Uh, so I recommend that. Very few jump scares, but very creepy. Very Cthulhu, like, psychological horror. <laughs> more more Cthulhu-ish. Great where... pre-gaming for this campaign. Yeah. Basically. It, it is. Um, what was the other one? The Seven Doors of Death? Seven Gates of Death? Something like that. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get on with this game before before we reminisce and never let me live that down. We're anyway. trying to stall so Jake, just so our fourth gets here, you know, before we have to fight something. That, hey, also, I don't have to come up with as much material if we just keep talking for a certain <laughs> amount of time. That's what you learn from the pro uh, uh, tabletop players. Okay. Um uh, so to get us kind of caught up here, and I think it's important. Um, oh my goodness. 
Captain Lothar, formerly of the Guard Tua, who are the island guard of this island, um, sent you down into the tunnels to locate three missing people, the Scaries and Father... Yeah, one of the priests of life. Mateo? Father, brother Mateo, thank you very much. I wasn't planning on doing the big one until I realized it actually needs to be the big one. Uh, sent you down here. Uh, he assigned a halfling guide, a cartographer, to kind of help you map out the tunnels and guide you through there, perhaps with a little bit more ease, because the tunnels themselves are quite dangerous, as you found out, meeting multiple ghouls, um, ancient spirits, ghosts that appeared more deadly than they were, uh, and then just rooms filled with bones and bones and corpses, as well as the royal room of the leading ghoul family. Uh, eventually, however, you followed this trail along until it led you to a newly created temple of Fetnathoa, uh, which you learned... Um, was this primal being that lived in the volcano of the island of Mu, uh, similar to our world's Atlantis, that the people were so fearful of that they would offer living sacrifices to it. And to gaze upon its image was to turn someone to a withered corpse. Or so you thought. Turns out the body was kept intact, the mind intact, within its leathery prison. At this work site, you found a Rulkatan equipment. So there's potential that your nation is involved with whatever this cult has to do. Um, and you worked your way in. As you did, you saw the normal uh, fascist horrors, uh, naked corpses and then all their belongings put into stacks of clothing their gold teeth removed so on and so forth and their bodies stacked like kindling wood either to dry out or to be smoked in the lovely essence of the lava oh and toe tags gotta have the toe tags on there saying everything about it um within those bodies you did in fact find all the uh the two scaries gracia uh, I really should stop trying to recall details if I don't have them actually written down. <laughs> you found the scaries and you found Brother Mateo within uh, either of these two rooms. You proceeded to ruthlessly solder some innocent cultists just playing a game <laughs> of cards. Um, I say you all. Uh, Bran ruthlessly slaughtered. Other than that one awesome Eldritch Blast that's got that one guy in the back perfectly aimed. Um, but mostly thanks to Bran beating the living tar out. I'll, I'll back Bran up when needed. Yeah. If we're wiping these guys out. I'll help them. <laughs> I took a big chunk out of the big guy, if I recall. Yeah. But he was busy taking a big chunk out of me, too. So uh, You continued exploring, and you found that this temple is actually built upon an older fortress inside the mountain where you found some jail cells where you met your new ally a ally. Short show golem a tumultuous ally is what i said because who knows what he's going to do next <laughs> uh, a shrunken head atop a horrific body that has been mutated to be just absolutely deadly and it appears that this thing feeds on the essence of dread in order to power it as it proceeded to die in front of you. And then you gave it life again, feeding it, oh, I think like seven levels of dread. That's a random detail to throw out there. I'm sure that won't bite anyone in the ass later. Um, Was it with that, that many? it proceeded to launch itself out of its jail cell, freeing itself and stomping along, crushing over corpses, smashing murals of ghouls, and proceeding to work its way through the temple, uh, activating traps that would have severely injured 
Uh, why is an ally? Ally. Ally, yeah. Um, and then proceeding to murder more cultists who happen to get in its way. Uh, you also kind of explored an odd room in the back, however, someone didn't buy the bait, uh, which is fine, I suppose. Okay. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So you... Punk is wise. <laughs> Wait, was I not there to take the bait? I no, don't understand why there. the bait no, was not taken. Didn't... <laughs> I don't know. You didn't. I go went that alone. You were following the golem. I went alone to check it out. Yeah, I think you uh, were more. You were more. And I haven't mentioned it. You were. Thank very... God, because I would have taken that bait. I know. If you, if you leave <laughs> yeah. bait, it needs to be in the same room as the warlock. All right. <laughs> I mean, he left it. He didn't play with it. It is still there. Um, I don't know about it. Is it ironic that the fish no. people are fishing for us? <laughs> Fine, it's fine. All right. Uh, and finally, uh, last we left off, you entered a room where your ally had uh, killed the previous cultist, turned one of their necks around, uh, beat the tar out of the other two, and suspended an elderly looking cultist uh, from the wall uh, with what looks to be acidic webbing as he is slowly following through the web of acid. Um, terrible, horrible sights. Um, let me see. I will say, I have forgotten since we have done this temple, you are still um, getting seismic activities. I've kind of forgotten to mention that because it is in a temple and I... No, you're still underground, so you are still right. occasionally getting seismic activities. Um not quite as frequently, um, but somewhat stronger. Um, and finally, I think that puts us about where we are. Um, the golem is standing in front of two very carved, very intricately carved Wilcomite doors. You are very familiar with this jade-colored stone. It has become somewhat of an item since you've gotten to this island and ever since you got on the boat. Welcome, Jacob. Merrick, uh, time for my, my, my grand entrance? Yeah. It's time to make your grand entrance, We've break down the enough. doors, and stare directly in front at whatever is behind the doors. That's, uh -huh. that's what everyone decided you would do. I have a question, Kyle. Yes. Did we take a short rest? I think you have gotten a short rest. About, yeah. It was during the, when they were uh, dumping the bodies or whatnot, the right? bodies were dumped. Um... Is this correct, Riley? Uh, do you need me to check? Because I'm pretty sure that happened before we touched Fednatho. Yeah. Or not Fednatho, but the Golem. So that means I'm the only one exhausted. Yeah, no. Well, this is, no, no, no. This is a, a short rest. I no, thought we yeah. might have taken a short rest, oh, but yeah, I got to yeah. double check. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't remember the short I rest. I don't think so. I have okay. not used any hit dice, and I'm I'm down okay. hit points. So That's what I, I thought. We did not take one. Okay, so we did not. Um, no. uh, the last short rest I have is from two sessions ago. So yeah, probably. All right. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, so let me just really quick describe this room one more time um, with the bodies in there. This is a newly muraled room. Uh, the work is being done in on the walls. Most of it is colored until you get towards the Wilkemite doors at the end there. Um, in it is the image of the island of Mu, of Fetnithoa. Uh, sacrifices being given of the island sinking sinking under the waters and Fetnathoa making its way underneath tectonic plates, which you know, some of the smarter among you know that there are primordial forces. What's the name of the island again? The island of Mu? The island of Mu. M-U. Yeah, I like the... 
like Chinese mythology. There's also a symbol called. Oh, the there's also Greek mythology. All right, well, yeah. Greek I need alphabet. a pen that actually writes. They get really mad if you say Mew. It's Moo, not Mew. It's a Pokemon. <laughs> so it's M U, right? M U, correct. Moo, <laughs> pronounced like Moo. Moo. Uh, and so in this mural, as you see, Gatnathoa coming under an island that is um, easily recognizable, certainly by Merrick as the island of Farzine. The rest of you never really got a good look at the island. You've been on it since, or been right next to it ever since you came within sight of it. Merrick, you would be familiar that this is the island of Farzine. And you see this kind of um, dark molten red overtaking this um, bright white fire uh, underneath and kind of settling under the island of Farzine. Walking forward, other than just weapons on the ground themselves, um, there are paints, there are tools for etching. Um, there is actually some bubbling, steaming liquid in what looks to be like this glass uh, quartz, more so than glass, I should say. Um, green quartz like pale uh, and as you can kind of continue walking forward if you were to ignore those things you would see that there are faint etchings of uh, murals soon to be put up and I we'll take a look at the soon to be put up murals and see what I can see for the outline <laughs> and I look at this bubbling liquid thingy. Um, <laughs> maybe touch it. Okay. It is give it a taste. Give it a taste. Hot as you get closer to it. It is bubbling. It is hot. Bubbling green liquid. Bubbling green liquid. Not like side of a green quartz pail bucket almost. It's hot the closer you get to it. Mm -hmm. it's um, like putting your hand near an oven. So, how close can I get to it without like taking damage, like hurting myself? Like, can I? Can I? I just want to try to gauge the approximate temperature. If it's like within the realm of like something I'm familiar with, like, hey, I'm cooking on this hot iron stove top versus yeah, imagine a hot iron stove top. That's about as close as you can get your hand to that. You could touch it if you want to. Just like, just like but really you know quick, that's like... probably going to hurt. And uh, go ahead and roll me a D100 while you're at it. Oh, yeah. Is it going to bubble? <laughs> it is bubbling. <laughs> Careful. Is... Hot. Is Low is good, right? Low is good? Low Seven! Is really good. Seven! <laughs> Wait, yeah. is that good or bad? Because yeah, really watch as this bubble kind of pops up and <laughs> you move your hand back and a part of that hits the floor and I don't watch horror movies but maybe you'll think I do if I say and like xenomorphic blood it just proceeds to burn a hole down through the floor quite easily Brian, I, how can I get a sample um, <laughs> this is going to be my project <laughs> so it doesn't harden or anything like that it just burns right through it melts through the ground I don't think you're going to be getting a sample to put a hole right through you oh no maybe I can mold this quartz that, that counts as stone right <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe you contain it <laughs> and then if I chuck it at someone maybe it'll break I don't <laughs> Maybe if you keep the maybe if you keep the, the 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 shell thin enough, it would do that. I actually I pull out a little bit of glass, um, that I have because I should have a glass rod, um, and I, I poke it and I want to see if the glass melts. Oh, the glass melts, so I can't contain it in glass vials to throw at people. Okay, that would be so. <laughs> well, thanks for like. I'm just gonna pick up this pail 
make sure it's away from me a little bit so the bubbles <laughs> don't splatter on me. I'm carrying this with me. It's it's You're now my take weapon. That thing. Yeah, how heavy is this? I'm a weak oh. guy, so I need to know. It sounds heavy. A bucket with water is heavy to me. So a quartz this bucket with like this is probably not going to go well if I try to pick it up. This sounds like a really bad idea. I mean, all you have to do is trip or anything like that, and you're going to fall into it, and you're yeah, going to be a freaking... Yeah, if need be, I'll, I'll you're squat gonna be and lift with left. my legs. I'm wise to know not to lift with my back. I'm going to squat down and pick it up with my legs. I wouldn't touch it. It is absolutely heavy. Um, if you are rushed putting this thing down... Um, you are going to spill it possibly on yourself. Um, so, for example, if you get in combat for some odd reason, I'm not saying you will or not, um, it's going to be your very first round is spending the entire time making sure you gently play th this down or throw it at somebody, I suppose, depending what on what you want to do. Also, what um, about the bubbles? I mean, is there a chance they're going to pop and hit them? Shh, let him. Oh, I, I thought about that. Just kidding. He does this him. to you guys all the time. Uh, anyway. I know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw it out there. I kind of figured he that that Riley is smart enough to actually figure that out. But I will comment that as much. It, I will actually mention bring that up. Are you really sure you want to take that? I don't know. I would leave it. I mean, that thing is. It's important. It's I, here. There's no we, such thing as red herrings in this. Well, Game. <laughs> record, write it down. I mean, write it down, oh. note it. But I mean, I don't think you have I to take interact it. with it first to understand what to write down. Uh, this well, is this is part of the scientific method. I mean, uh. it's really hot and burns holes through floors and glass. I, I mean, you I, get I that learned that by out. getting close. Yeah, exactly. I only learned that by interacting. Um, exactly, but I don't think we want to take it. How full is it? Can we dump out enough that it's light enough to carry? That's a good idea. We'll find out. So yeah, 20, 20 on the, that strength check, Kyle. Are you chucking the entire thing or are you just a little splash? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 gonna try and chuck it a little bit from a distance so any splashback doesn't come at get me. I yeah. back way the fuck away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not stay near that. <laughs> I'll go stand next to Bran if wherever the hell he is. I'm assuming he's not near this. This substance hits the Wilkemite. You manage to avoid the golem who is standing in front of the doors. <laughs> um, and the acid hits the walls and then works its way down the whirling tentacles, eyes in the door seem to hold their shape. Oh. But then they begin to spin and warp under the heat of this acid. So wait, once it so it reaches affects, the floor, so it affects it once again just smooths down, huh? It affects Wolkamite, is what you're saying? It appears to, yes. Awesome. That no was what I wanted to study the pale either. So it's uh, well now that it's empty, I am. That what do you think I was doing? <laughs> 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 All right, no, I'm I'm kidding. I'll let other people have a turn. Um, okay. Just let let you know, I'm going to be tinkering around and taking notes behind sure. the scenes. Sure. Not looking up anywhere, looking down at my things. So I may sure. be surprised. <laughs> uh, Bran, you're looking at these murals yet to be. You recognize acid burns. It looks like they may have been using the substance in the pail to um, work the stone yeah. a little bit easier. Um. But in there, there's faint images of a army of ghouls overtaking the island as oh, that's not good. the Kaza, the volcano on Farzine, erupts with these horrible tendrils snaking out from the sides of the volcano itself. On the other side, you see what appears to be the shape of a woman uh, in some sort of armor, strange armor, bound 
before a large, writhing creature, massive, um, random claws, disfigured faces, writhing pseudopods. And around the writhing creature, you see deep ones. The ichthyoid features um, unmistakable to you. Give me a wisdom saving throw, please. I take a look at this figure of an armored woman and inspect it a little bit more. It, I don't know if there's detail yet, obviously. But. Yeah, it looks like um, had the painter uh, had the chance to put the detail on, you certainly would have come away with a lot more. But right now, it's simply a, a feminine figure in armor bound before this thing. And where is the setting of this event in tunnel, cavern, chamber, or outside? Outside. Um, in what looks to be a city. Is there walls of green around the city? <laughs> Not right. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's the Emerald City, guys! Well, I mean, you, you referred to that in Anja's dream sequences and stuff. Yeah, and so. it, it said there's no reference. Like, there if I look walls. around, if I look around, nothing seems familiar, right, to that, to those dreams? Nothing um, that you are familiar with, no. It's this Farzine. An entirely alien city in Farzine. You see the city of Farzine, the island of Farzine in Kaza. This other side, you have the bound figure, the writhing mass, the... Uh, deep one uh, kind of floating so you might imagine that it's some sort of undersea city what looks to be coral just judging by rough shapes is what you would imagine are there any etchings of words or anything you do not see any words does that entity oh my god I do I want to look at this you can look at it <laughs> Mm. at the risk of probably failing another goddamn dread save uh, I'll look at it and I'm wondering if uh, if any I have any knowledge of what that entity is either through my past or dreams or whatever Yogg's mm -hmm. of Thothery yep that's what I figured ooh that's a good roll. <laughs> Maybe I do know what this is. 16 plus 5 is 21. 21. You know this creature to be a servant of Dagon or Mother Hydra. Uh, something that these uh, deep ones worship and strive to control. This would be a Shoggoth. Uh, Mother Hydra, you said? Uh, Father Dagon and Mother Hydra. Okay. And just, that's a, a cool. Okay, it's a Shoggoth. It's super cool. The last time you guys fought one of those, you were level 18. Level eight, you almost level, died. Level <laughs> eight, 18? Uh, you particularly. But I'm referring to a uh, 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 one shot. Done oh, oh, right, 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 right. The, the bread starter. Mm hmm. Okay. Anything else, Merrick? Would you like to do anything while you are here? So what's this golem doing? Because I'm still slightly concerned about his whole thing. <laughs> At I this am. point, he was uh, uh, standing in front of 
uh, the two large, uh, what used to be uh, quite um, perfect images of swirls, patterns, this beautiful set of Wilcomite doors. Uh, Wilcomite imagined jade in this sense. Um, Intel uh, Riley threw acid at, at the doors, uh, of which case the acid didn't really have as much effect. Uh, the golem took a step back and it's just halted <laughs> in front of the doors. Okay. All right. So, no, I'm just going to keep an eye on this golem and on Riley's little acid pot. <laughs> Once I'm done with the etchings and probably at this point, Riley's throwing of the acid catches my attention. Mm -hmm. I look at the acid, I see what it's doing. I look at him and I say, next time it would be wise to save such destructive fluids for if we encounter an image that will turn and wither people to stone, to throw it on that. But, but carrying that stuff around was going to be... How would you carry it? I was mean, willing. Uh, I think it was a bad idea. That thing was bubbling up and it could hit him. And I mean, if it did that the floor, can you imagine what it's going to do to him if anyway. it hit him? So I, I, I we don't know what it would have done, anyways. Well, we see what it did. Can we actually <laughs> open the doors now or are they melted together? <laughs> That would be freaking hilarious. Well, Riley, I think that was there? a good enough strength check. I'll let you say whether you splashed it and melted the doors together or not. Well, I mean, the goal was to melt the doors down. So I don't really care what the effects are. You roll. <laughs> like, <laughs> either worked or it didn't. Past that, like... I mean, we just have to bust the door down if they're melted together. <laughs> future is the future, past is the past. <laughs> so, the doors also appear to be slightly melted together, but with enough force, someone could break them open. So, it, is there a, is there a place safe to walk to get to the doors? There probably is even a safe place to touch the doors, FYI. Um, <laughs> That's what I'm wondering. I mean, does it cool off pretty? Or, or, or did, did it like run down? Like what's the viscosity? Is it able to, since it didn't melt all the way through the door, is there still some hanging to the door? Or did it run all the way down to the ground and puddle? I mean, I will say if you wait long enough, it kind of thicker than water. Certainly. Where's And where's the golem right now? Standing, Standing by the door. The door. He didn't get hit by any of the acid? He did not. So there's obviously a safe place to go. Mm -hmm. it, now, now can I peek under the doors? Is there like a little gap under the doors where the acid pitted the ground? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yes, you know what? I don't even want to try and look on the other side of the doors right now. I'm going to take <laughs> notes on this mural. I haven't done that yet. Okay. Um, so I'll I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna leave exploration of the other room as a team thing, not just a me thing. Okay. So <laughs> Let's I'll, go there. I'll, and I'll tell you what I know about the uh, about the mural too. Oh, so cool! You Thank that. you. I'll, yeah, I'll make yeah, sure I I, yeah. I, I'm always for sharing information with all you guys. So, Aww. no, it's true. And I know you. I know your goal is you want you want information. You want you want to learn about all the things. So, mm -hmm. and I'm willing make, to share information as well. As uh, long as you don't touch me, we're all it's all good. Oh, is that it? I didn't know you had a thing against touching until just recently yeah, when the no. golem touched you and you screamed at me. <laughs> yeah, you, you and you and Bran have done a lot of mental damage to me. That's I, I'm sorry. I wasn't even aware. Um, I know. If, if, you, if you have a problem with how I do things, you just need to communicate nicely like this well, and I'll listen. I, I mean, it was kind of just a reaction. It wasn't like, you know, I really thought much oh. about it until it actually happened. No, I, I don't blame you for, for uh, reacting the way you did if you have a fear like that. I'm just saying, I didn't even know this was a fear until you communicated I did, like this. So it, I, I really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, okay, that's fine. I, but I, I definitely want to move on. So uh, what else? Is there anything else left in this room to explore? Uh, the bodies of the cultists, various weapons, various paints. Various oh. Tools. 
Uh, yeah, check out the bodies of the cultists <laughs> if they have anything useful on them. Uh, oh my goodness. Yeah, what, is it sacrilegious to loot the bodies? No, uh, not in this case. Okay. <laughs> No, no, I mean, no. you could I, I, I saw what whatever they <laughs> I mean, they're not going to use it anymore, right? I, I'm still just a little bit on edge about, about, about you know, dead, upsetting brand right now. <laughs> uh, I do want to. I will. That's a fair game. I want to take. Yeah, yeah no, brand care. wants to kill them all. Um, I am going to take. I do want to take them down and such because I mean, I'm not just going to leave them there. That would be disrespectful, and they are still people. Even if they're um, not good people. I mean, I guess I'll go investigate the purple webbing thing while I help. Oh, that the one cultist is in? Yeah. That I, I mean I won't touch is, the webbing. I, well, yeah, I'm smart. I I'll touch it with the I'll touch it with the gold wa- gold rod that's half melted, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> the what is yeah. The what glass is rod does not actually react to this specific acid. But the corpse itself is starting to sink into the webbing a little bit. He was suspended. And so the gravity is kind of forcing him to fall through the webbing a little bit. Maybe about like a half inch or so. Um, The other corpses, uh, you find approximately uh, 43 uh, pieces of gold in various copper, silver, so on and so forth. So 43, um, so everybody gets like 10 gold. I mean, I'll just divide it up right here so I can give it out. DM cheapskate over here. So um, you all get 10 gold and I mean, finder's fee. I don't know, I'm not that. Yeah, the, be- the bank gets taxes. Yeah. Uh, and then you go through uh, and then one of the hands, well, Perception roll. All of us? Just the ones who are looking at the corpses. Oh, okay. Oh, that, That's I'm not doing great. That. 13. Nope. 18. Yep. 15. Uh, Merrick, you find a finely crafted uh, uh, throwing dagger. Ooh. Um. Oh, detect magic while I'm at it, if that gives me a bonus to perception is magic. or something. Oh, so I see what Merrick has in his hands. I'm like, yeah. cool, nice find. <laughs> That's magic, by the way, Merrick. Okay, can you tell what it is? <laughs> is it oh, yeah, is... I can tell the type of magic it is. It's probably a, a type of magic that returns it to you since it's throwing dragger, based that on my is guess. Exactly but... what it is. <laughs> That's pretty sweet, and I don't. Th- I think a good person got it, actually. I, say, I do throw daggers occasionally. I might throw daggers more now that I don't have to worry about ammo. <laughs> okay. Um, as you guys are going through this, uh, anyone who is examining the Wilkemite door, the acid, uh, the stone itself has cooled down. There is still smoke coming up from the stone underneath the doors. It literally splashed on the stone and proceeded to go down fairly quickly, although the heat eventually morphed the Wilkemite itself, and once it hit the stone floor, instead of pooling outward, it just went straight down. And so there is, after an entire pail full of of this acid substance, it's still smoking pretty heavily. You cannot honestly see the bottom of this hole. Once the uh, acid has gone down the... Huh? Nothing. Good. I just said, wow. I hope it drops down on Fednathoa's head. The acid. I know. That'd be great. Once the acid has dripped down the door enough, I will look at the golem and I will say to him, why do you wait to open it? Does not respond to you. Does it look like it's still active, or does it look more like what it used to when we saw when we found it originally? It still looks fairly active. The still kind of purple mist is still flowing from the eye tips and everything like that. It's once it approached this door, it just stopped for some odd reason. For the door to open, is it in or out? You push it in. Push so it's it in. Push. Okay. 
So uh, the, go- the golem's just standing there, not reacting at all, huh? This door, how big is it? Oh, gotta ask all the hard questions, don't you? Um, each door is about five foot in width, um, ten foot in height. Um, big enough for the golem to go through? Easily. I will find a safe place on one of the doors that has no asset, and I will attempt to push to see just how easy or hard it is to open. Can two of us go there? Actually, I will help with 10 pounds of mage hand force. Yeah, but I actually, <laughs> but I have a strength, guys. I I just try, I'm just trying to open it. I'm not calling for anybody. It does not open at just your touch or at your touch and the mage hand's touch. It appears the acid did melt the door a bit together. Well, there goes that plot. <laughs> Let's wait, go home. Wait, wait. I will stand in front of the door and then I will kick it. Damage. Uh, six. Six. Um... Is your damage magic at this point or no? I believe it's not, right? It is not. It is not. Um, you hurt your foot a lot. It's like kicking a stone door. Um, with, and I don't think you're the one who identified it as Wilkemite. Um, I'm an expert at Wilkemite. Yeah, are you an expert at Wilkemite? I've like studied. A uh, I've studied Wilkemite a, a little bit. <laughs> okay. Yeah, once before. Wilkemite is but... a fairly dense subject uh, uh, substance, as well as um, a great conductive uh, to the eldritch, um, and so very well. It's going to take a lot more than that. You're probably I will take out the adamantine axe. There you go, and I will strike it with that. Uh, give me one moment. I need to add an axe to my inventory for damage. I don't need the damage on this one. At that point, you start... It's just a hand axe? It's a pickaxe, I believe. A pickaxe? A, yeah. They do have a pickaxe, right? I'm not crazy. Yeah. But I thought it was like an axe axe. Yeah, I thought it was a battle axe, but yeah, if it's, it's a, a pickaxe, that's even hand cooler. Axe. If it's a pickaxe, I oh, would have wanted I think, one. <laughs> I, put, did we... I think most of you grabbed a pickaxe, to be honest with you. Did we, didn't we get yeah, that I from... One. Didn't we get that from the cultist? Yeah. No, you got. Oh, you did get uh, uh, an adamantine hand axe. That is correct. Yes, that's what I'm talking from about. Blessed Berserker. You okay, also yeah. had the adamantine pickaxe. Oh yeah, that's right. It was outside the chamber. Time. Yes. Was there only one of those? Yes. Okay. Well, there were more than one outside the chamber, if I remember oh. right. Still, at least we can get through this freaking door. <laughs> All right. Now. Well, yeah, I right, pull out one of the me. picks. Okay. I, yeah. I want to pick two. I'm going to run out there and grab a pick really quick, too, just in case. I'll, I'll stand That's ready to get some away with whatever. That first strike. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Brand. You run out, you grab your pickaxe. It's a little eerie out there. And as you go to pick up, you know, grab your pickaxe, the earth just rumbles real good. And you can see stalactites falling down uh, in the temple. And so, ooh. <laughs> oh, uh, 10 damage. Yes. I assume we see that too, by the way, right? So this is, I believe, a two-handed weapon, and it ha- oh my god, it has reach? Freaking massive. This thing is massive. Yeah, and it hurt like hell. Yeah, it's too. reach, and it has two, and is two-handed. Really? That's crazy. Is this, is this, um, I don't know, how, do, how does the damage work? Is that like an improvised weapon damage? Or? No, it's a pick. Oh, it's an actual weapon. Oh, uh, no, I'm looking at the wrong thing. <laughs> uh, a war pick is what you're wanting to call it. Uh, so 1d8 piercing damage. Um, martial melee. It is one-handed. Um, or, well... Yeah, I grabbed the wrong thing. My bad. Yeah, no, that happened. Yeah, you begin to chip away at the Wilkemite door. Um, there's a faint blow to the Wilkemite as you strike it. 
but whether that's just a trick of the eye, you're not quite sure. Um, but you can break the door open enough. Not necessarily digging your way through it. It's just yeah. like this. Yeah, cracking it. Where it's stuck. Surface level, yeah. It did not actually go through the Wilkemite very far at all. I'm almost just kind of mushed it around like Play-Doh. Um, and you're able to crack the door open so that you could push it open. All right, I'll push it open. Okay. Um, I think I'm still getting that pick in the other room. <laughs> I think maybe I stumbled a little bit with that shaking. Is he, yes, I mean, is he... uh, you feel the shaking in the temple. Uh, some of the murals, um, for those paying attention, do crack a little bit, and there's dust falling from the ceiling. We gotta move. As you open the door, you hear Distinct. Oh, lovely. My wife is laughing at me now. It's Aklo. Do I understand that? But it's morphed in some way. It's, it's like pig Aklo. I don't mind T that speaks. It's pig Aklo. It's pig Aklo, exactly. <laughs> um, does Riley hear this and does Riley think that it's yes, potentially you spell? Hear it If you got to uh, um, like past the main door of the temple, this is that loud reverberating deep in your chest chant. So if there's anything else in this temple, chances are you've just alerted it. Cool. Um, does Riley think this is a spell, though? This speech, this chant. The speech itself? Um, do you speak Aklo as well? No, but no. I mean, I'm an expert in like everything <laughs> Warlock and Arcana. <laughs> so even without knowing the language, maybe I can feel the power okay. behind it. I don't know. Mm, from your is. distance, uh, make an arcana check. All right. Uh, 22. 22. Uh, you heard Fatnathoa for certain. Yeah. Um, there are ways of making a chant um, like that go on. It could be magical. Someone could could have possibly opened up a trap you are just honestly not sure if you bring that knowledge down with you when you get to the doors um kind of kind of talk to each other a little bit it's like oh well it was speaking aklo yeah and i I let them know that i picked up fadnathoa in the chant and remember that's the one that if you look upon it or its visage you get mummified like those people we saw back there so maybe we should um you gotta be careful. Be careful moving forward. <laughs> we know there's an image somewhere in this temple. Yeah. This is a prayer. I do speak um, Echo. It appeared to. I mean, that's the thing. Uh, uh, it was such a distorted Echo that it was hard to tell. Does it sound like it has reverence in the voice? Yes, you would say that. Mm-hmm. Then it's a prayer. Mm hmm. It may even be somebody, something. The 22 carried over um, this door was so finely crafted. Uh, in order to imbue magic into an item, it has to be something of a masterwork quality. A plus one, plus two, plus three kind of weapon. It has to be that finely made. These doors were that finely made. Yeah, not now. Until someone <laughs> threw acid on it. It may have been a uh, a magic mouth spell that was contorted into gibberish just about when you threw acid on the door. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> it could have been bad, guys. It I saved it all. <laughs> Though actually, Riley's probably a little upset because he realizes, oh man, now I don't know what so they're saying. The sound <laughs> is coming from the door itself? The sound was coming from the Wait, door itself. The door okay. is open, right? The, the door is now open. open. What does the, the golem do? I think you were about to, to ask that, Varric. 
Does he step uh, forward into the pit and fall to his death in a pool of acid? <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> that Again? would be a- <laughs> great. No, maybe he'll go in and Roth will stop whatever's praying in there. That I think he's praying in there. That was a magic mouth. Uh, it proceeds to walk through the welcome uh, the open doors and falter in its steps a little bit unsure of itself perhaps for those with a good insight I will look at the goal and then 15, I will step ahead of it 15 passive insight good enough to get that I'd say that's good enough to get that I mean it's a golem it shouldn't have hesitancy unless it can't follow orders that it's trying to follow but this one also seems to have a bit of a mind of its own as well so it's kind of that seems a little strange, but maybe not strange compared to this column itself. You enter into the room. Um, there appear to be two doors on either side, a long hallway. And at the end of this hallway, it kind of expands out into a large room again. And you see this very... dark looking curtain that hangs down from the ceiling um, approximately 30 to 40 feet high. Does it look like it's draped over anything? It just appears to be hanging down from the ceiling. All right. Um, I will look around to see if there's any one or thing hiding in alcoves behind pillars, anything like that, on the ceiling as well. Sure. You do not see anything. Um, Where's the voice come from? It's the magic mouth, Carol. It's a magic mouth. Sorry, but where where is it in the room, by the way? The door. Oh, it's just the door. Okay. So the door was talking. All right. No, I open the door. It said something about Fatnathoa that was loud enough to be heard throughout the entire temple. Um, if Riley chooses to share that information with you. Um, I totally forgot and probably didn't. It should have been <laughs> obvious for everyone, though, I hope. <laughs> um, no, at this point, this is bare, stripped down, at least in this kind of alcove opening space. Very basic, minimalistic very similar to a temple or a monastery. At least in the first section that you're in currently. I'm going to head towards the curtain, slowly. Uh, okay. uh, is the curtain covering the whole way, or can you see like off to the sides of the curtain? You have to work your way down a hallway first, passing by these two doors on either side of you. But as you walk down, you can just see that this dark curtain goes and expands and expands all the way across the wall. Um, And this is, again, another about 30 feet across, wall to wall, ceiling to floor. Um, I will motion for Anja and Merrick to please come back, come over. All right. <laughs> I'll come over there. No, I'm ready. You two in particular for a reason. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll take your word for it. I will come over. I will take my lantern. I will light it. Uh, okay. Actually, I don't know if I need to light it. I have dark vision. I think. No, no, I will light it. I think this will work better with that. I will take my lantern, put it on the uh, like around the edge of the curtain, like on the other side without looking. I will say, as you get closer to this curtain, you feel wrongness. Mm-hmm. In each of you. Mm-hmm. The closer and closer you get, whatever is on the other side of this thing is. It's not good. It's not evil. Not chaotic. Not lawful. Just wrong. I will then say to Anja, take out your blade, 
your new blade. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yep. Please hand it to me. Uh, okay. I know you want to see it's behind the curtain. Why can't I go put it behind the curtain? Please hand it to me. Now, let me finish before you uh, continue on a little bit further because I have not okay. fully uh, um, finished explaining the room. Before you even reach the curtain, there is yet another room to your left um, on the north side of this temple here. Uh, and that door, the two previous doors were just bare, monastic wooden doors. This one here has engraved inlay. It is a much nicer uh, uh, door. If that changes any of your decisions you're about to make. What type of door is it? It is uh, a, a jungle wood. Does it look new? Yeah. Yeah, at this point, everything in this portion of the temple is part of that new build. I won't do anything different other than um, to keep an eye on that door. I need to look. I need to know. You want to know what's behind the curtain? Yes, but if this works, I might be able to determine what, what it is without its effects. The saying says an image, a statue looks at it, but I just want to see if it is a statue on the side. I will look at the I will look down at it at its feet or the base. Oh, you want to put the sword low. So I look at Merrick and I say, Merrick, can you carefully stick your sword past the curtain? Make sure you tilt it so that the whatever it's looking at is down at the floor. And Did don't you look. And don't you and look. Don't look. No. Just hold it out like this and don't look. I mean, I don't care if you want me to take the I will, rest of the camera. I will turn and I will look at it alone. No, 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 no. I haven't given there is no to reason yet. to. There is no reason to have two people do this. I think if we're going to... I think you're more valuable. Anja, please. Please. You have done enough and you have suffered enough already. That's why you're more valuable. You're not broken. That's Do not argue with me in this, please. Merrick, if you would. This will only take I, a moment. I just, you know, I give you the sword and I fucking walk away. Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna sneak towards the curtain because I don't know if there's something, you know, sentient on the other side. So do I need to roll stealth check here? I don't know. Nine, nine, I'm not saying anything. Uh, yes. Ah, uh, shush. <laughs> uh, 19. That okay. is good. You stealthily sneak forward. Right. Um, just so I am clear, who is shoving one of the mirror blades into the curtain? That's me. Okay. Very slowly. Ooh. And Brand, you are looking into the other mirror blade to see. Yes, what it sees. I am holding the blade kind of at a downward angle, so I don't get a full view, maybe. But we'll see. Yeah, this is really going to depend on uh, you, Merrick. Um, you potentially can screw him over entirely too well. I'm uh, going to do my best to angle it downward mm -hmm. and roll a one. This is, um, as you get closer, it is a heavy curtain. You can attempt to shove the blade underneath it, but it takes a lot of just pressure to even slide this blade underneath it. Off to the side. Try, you could do the sides as well. Um, or you could also try and just 
shove the sword into the leather, pierce through it, and see if you can maneuver it that way. How are you doing this? Grant, are you telling me to go to the side? Because I'll do the uh, side I will leave this. that up to you. Okay. You have options. I will leave that up to you. Oh, I'm not <laughs> not gonna start with stabbing it. That's for sure. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to lift it and. Well, that's good because I was gonna start with Eldridge blasting it, but <laughs> <laughs> then then Bran got busy with an idea, so I stood back by the doors. <laughs> no, so. um, I'll, I'll try lifting it, and then when I realize how heavy it is, and that I probably can't do it without stealth, I think I'll try to move to the side to see if I can get an angle that way without. I want to lift it with two arms. Okay. Yeah, you're able to, again, this curtain is heavy, and whatever is actually holding it to the wall, it is just a stubborn thing to move. But you're going at it the smarter way, so go ahead. I think a sleight of hand check from the rogue to make sure you do not screw over Bran and just show that blade right into its <laughs> face. <laughs> All right. Let's let it hand. 15. 15. Ooh. You push the sword through and the curtain, just the weight of it is just kind of hard to even kind of hold the blade up there. And it's tilt downward. Bran, you get a fairly good look at the room and the object within. Give me a dread saving throw, please. Yeah. Put it in nine. Total of nine. Jeez. I rolled a four. <laughs> You're the monk, man. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, yeah, you have this blade tilted downward, but the image in the blade is just perfectly, not perfectly centered, but centered well enough that it catches your eye and you turn the blade to look at it more. And you're no longer in the room. You're burning. Your skin is a light, but you're unable to scream as you scream. Your mouth fills with volcanic ash, with dirt. You are unable to move. And while it's dark in this tomb, suddenly a light comes forward. And eyes upon eyes tendrils upon tendrils proceed to open up into your vision and you gain three levels of dread <laughs> and if you take the time because you're almost stuck in this position, just staring at this thing. When you come back to yourself, whatever this thing is, the statue in the center of the room, you don't feel your joints start to stiff and you don't feel your body aching. It is an image of something, but it must not be perfect enough to actually mummify somebody. Do I think that's because of the way, because of the blades, looking through it at the blades? Or that it physically is not perfect enough? That is something where you would have to go and examine the statue in detail. <laughs> not happening. <laughs> How big was the room that it's in? Uh, it's not really its own separate room. It's more separated by the uh, uh, curtain. 
Uh, like, uh, how deep away from the curtain is it? Five feet. Okay, so fairly close. Fairly close. From Merrick's angle that he went through, he's probably as far as you can potentially be. The statue is at the center of the room, although it is in the back of the room. Um, is the statue towards the wall? Of, like, the back wall or anything? It is against the back wall. All right. I will place the blade down. I will wave Merrick's hand away as I'm, like, shaking a bit. I have an idea. I do as well. Well, I have an idea of how to get rid of that. I do as well. And what's that? I'm going to go in there. I know to destroy it. Okay. Now, how are you going to do that without looking at it? I will close my eyes. I have seen the room. I know where it is. I got a better idea. I'll close my eyes. I'll take a freaking adamantine pickaxe and you and Merrick guide me. How are we going to guide you if we can't see where you're going? You can. You're going to look through that, the two mirror blades. I don't want to look again. Stop. I take up the adamantine pickaxe that I have. I've already looked. I know where it is. I can, I can tell by the wall. This is a bad idea. This whole place is a bad idea. But somebody's got to do it. We have any acid I've already left? done it. What was that? Do we have any acid left? Maybe through what? that door where Elanja's guarding. <laughs> um, or I could just Eldridge Blast over there a bunch and hope I hit it. And if you expose it, then we'll all see it. Yeah, I mean, I could just no. like stick stick my hand through the curtain. I don't need to look. I just blast a few times, like I mean, a bunch until I until uh, we feel satisfied. Maybe a hundred or two fine. blasts, and then uh, fine. Can make Bran look again. It's fine. I mean, I was just gonna say you're not planning on looking. Not gonna look. To be honest, though, it doesn't matter. I'm probably a dead man anyway, sooner or later. I mean, we all really are anyways, eventually. It all depends on when our time comes. Actually, I do have an adamantine pickaxe in my inventory. I, I will go to the edge of the curtain and close my eyes. And before I open it, I say, everyone, please look away. Do not peek. All right, I look out of the room, see if anyone's coming towards the temple <laughs> that had the, the I go magic up mouth. I go, I'm going to quickly grab, go retrieve my sword and be like this. And I'm going to go back to the to the, to the door. Uh, yeah. Merrick, we already said that you removed the sword. Correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. One brand, one brand. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Oh, no, I'm just going to keep doing this. We'll make sure he's good. <laughs> Okay, yeah. You grab your sword. Uh, Bran, give me a strength check to just push into this curtain. That's an 18. 18. Yeah, no. Um, this curtain is dense, heavy leathers. Uh, uh, very similar to a mask that you had found earlier. Mm-hmm. So much more thicker than that. Actually, feeling it. Do I know what type of hide it is? Roll a medicine check. <laughs> 27. Well, there's a reason I said a medicine and not a uh, nature check. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, yes. Stitched upon stitched, uh, you go through human leather. My eyes are closed, mm -hmm. and I am putting one hand against the wall. Let me double check myself here. You try, you put your hand up against the curtain. And you can't do it. You cannot approach the source of dread. Uh -huh. Uh 
And so while you can feel that yummy, yummy leather in front of you, you have the strength to push through. You know it's behind there, even if you close your eyes and you cannot bring yourself to approach it. Is there any potential way of overcoming that fear? Um, Touch the golem, you lose dread, right? Or is that phobia permanent? This is, but, no, uh, it's not a phobia. That's, well, I mean, that's, this that's, per, what this I meant is, is this is our particular type of fear from a thing that yeah, we... Yeah, this is a particular type of fear. You can certainly try it um, if you want. Um, yeah, I'm going to say if you do even try it. The golem itself has been trying to draw this energy into itself. It doesn't even try to approach you in any sort of way or show interest if you try and rid the dread through the golem. This is something that's a little bit more... <laughs> um, similar to a flashback that we had. Or not a flashback, a dream. Um, I know Bran isn't... Um, isn't part of that but um when riley goes to visit with his patron he is doing the same thing that you essentially did although his has more details um simply because he is being allowed there and protected there um in the place of uh, his patron. You have visited the plane of this patron through a image of it. Um, and just being near the source that is capable of doing such a thing, um, you're just not going to be able to get rid of this dread being near it. You recognize this horror, this unnatural, this blasphemous feeling, and it's that same feeling that just absolutely permeates this room. So it appears I cannot, there's no way for me to muster myself against it, correct? Not as you try and go after it, no. So I will just stand there for like literally a minute, like trying. And then I will step away and turn back a uh, hand against the wall, and I'll just kind of drop the pick and just whisper, I can't, I can't go near it. How big is the space over there behind the curtain? Five, five, six feet away towards the middle. The, the leather is thick, heavy. You have asked me not to get through it. Mm, okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I want to try try my plan and stick my hand behind the, the curtain and Eldritch Blast a couple times. Yeah, okay. Um, strength check to push the curtain out of the way. <laughs> well, that'd be great if I failed this. <laughs> um, oh, all right, 20. Unnatural. Yeah. yeah, you are able to move the curtain uh, uh, out of the I'm way. I'm not looking at why. It's my hand going through. <laughs> very, very adamant is my hand. <laughs> D100 for me. All right. And it's my non-dominant hand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> <laughs> All right, D100. Mm -hmm. 61. 61. Mm, yeah, the gap opens up enough that you start to begin to see and you manage to close your eyes before you feel just drawn into this thing. Uh, go ahead and start shooting. Uh, just going willy-nilly over there? Yeah, I might start off with like 10 to start. 10 okay. blasts. Yeah. Okay. Just just uh, starting. Okay. Um, Alright, so let's let's roll these. I actually don't need you to. Uh, I well, don't care me... that my first roll was a nat 20, oh. FYI. But remember, whenever roll. you're going blinded, you're disadvantaged. Oh, that's true. 
fuck. <laughs> well, then my second roll was an unnatural 20. Okay. So, so give me the damage on that first one. Um, you hit. All right. First one it is. Wait. Uh, does Eldritch Blast? We hit level five. So that's two beams, right? I have to roll those hit to hit separately or? Yeah, go should ahead. Roll up, it should up with uh, D&D Beyond. Huh? It should go up with D&D Beyond on its yeah, own. Yeah, it should, it should just tell you what it actually. Yeah, yeah. it just says total beams two. Then yeah, that's, so what it, then two, that's what it does. Two different yeah. beams, yeah. Disadvantage again. Okay. So the first one was. Or the first one was nine damage, by the way. Gotcha. On the second one, I rolled a 15 to hit on disadvantage. Okay. That will hit. All right. And that is four damage. Four damage. Okay. You get ready to blast it again. And the ceiling above you breaks open, splits in half. And this thing, this tendril, crawls its way out of a hole in a mouth without actually further uh, 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 coming completely out of it. It just appears to be like this odd, jagged pseudopod with those pearly eyes on it. I don't see this. Is this behind the curtain or is this, this is on our side? This is above you. Oh. It's <laughs> partially coming out of the curtain. The curtain Ooh. starts to sag in the center. Uh, it appears something uh, did not want you to do that. Um, and everybody, roll initiative. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Nat one. <laughs> 21 for me. Six. 23. And I imagine you're somewhere less than uh, a six. Is that correct, Ernie? Oh, I had the nat one. You had the nat one. <laughs> you don't have a you have don't you have a bonus to your initiative? Or do well do yeah, not? it's nat one plus four. So yeah, so I you're guess. actually going so you're going on five, I'm going on six. Oh, oh okay, okay, okay. Yeah. What's I, I just two? assumed a nat one was going last no matter what. <laughs> I uh, rolled a two. Technically no. Uh huh. okay. So you are after it. I also rolled a net one. <laughs> <laughs> well, then Wait, that's great. I'm already telling you what's happening. Misty what? stepped the fuck out of there <laughs> towards the temple doors, away from the falling curtain, away from this tentacle thing. There's my action. Unfortunately, I'm afraid not. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, you are all surprised as this thing comes out from the earthen ceiling above you. First thing, Bran. Merrick, Anja, you guys note is that the entire the entire world begins to shake and the Wilkemite doors are buried under a pile of rubble as this thing Oh, begins. fuck. Wait a minute. How much rubble? Because I was near the doors. Oh, you were near the Wilkemite yeah. doors? Yeah, I went back there? to I went well. Because that's a whole actually, hallway down. I was gonna say oh, wait, if that's that far away, you're right. No, of, no, you're right. No, I wouldn't have gone that far out. Yeah. No, you're right. But dust just falls down, the temple walls begin to crack, and this thing starts to attack. Who's next to the curtain? Uh, yeah, you're gonna get at least. I mean, I have my hand Riley. through the curtain. Yeah, I'm, no, you're I'm there. One way or the other. <laughs> it's great. That's why I want my action. <laughs> uh, Bran and Merrick, are you still next to the curtain? I probably would have walked away a bit because I am too afraid of the thing and ashamed. No, I'm as far away as I could be without actually leaving the room. <laughs> I'm over by Anja, probably. Okay. How many feet away is that? Oh my goodness. Uh, we are talking uh, at least a full movement by Bran. Two, if you are. Are you guys keeping sight of each other? Yeah. Yes. I'm yeah. not. Okay. That you are from all the within a single move of each other okay. because sight lines get blocked if you start going 
back to the Wilkemite doors. Well, that depends. Is that a single move of where I have my status or is that a single normal move? Because remember, I'm exhausted. I've got two points of exhaustion. So my movement is halved okay. at 15. So am I within 15 feet? I mean, I guess well, for, say for, for funsies, sake, yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, you are within 15 feet. All right. Yeah, okay. that's, that's fine. Which is probably going to save the life <laughs> of Riley. Okay, let's see. Plus ten to He's hit. He's tough to hit. Twenty-eight oh. to hit you. Oh, never mind. Tough to hit. I'm tough to hit. Let's go with that. Um, <laughs> your your armor class is really good. Yeah, it is. I have natural <laughs> armor class. Um, Except for you. Know, this I'm is this is the very first time I've been hit down here. FYI, you take. 18 bludgeoning damage as one of these tendrils from the central tendril reaches out and slams into you, grasping onto you. Oh, so I'm I'm grappled or you are held? grappled at this point. Anja 14, yep. that is 24 to hit you. Wait, it's hitting me that far away? It's a giant it's tentacle very, oh, coming geez. from the sky. Wait, yeah, what it's did, oh, 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 all right, wait, what did you roll? A 24 to hit you. Oh, 20. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's a murder hobo on the dice. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm going to die. 20 bludgeoning damage. Oh, Jesus As Christ. this thing proceeds to grab onto you. Oh, oh, it's gra so I'm grappled too. Mm -hmm. Fuck. Um, I'm in trouble. And I'm going to say that's all it's going to do this round. Don't you think that was enough? <laughs> You're right. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, Bran or Merrick, eeny, meeny, money, mo. <laughs> hey, that was enough, damn it. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, I'm going to say you two are far enough back because you guys aren't actually exhausted and you can kind of keep an eye out better. Um, so that brings us to the top of the round. Merrick, this thing just burst from the ceiling. Um dust is now starting to come down it's getting a little bit harder to see things what are you like to do um well it just grabbed anja right mm -hmm. uh, oh. are we dangling upside down from the ceiling now just like how how is this working are we still on the ground she within you know like melee oh. range of, of the ground <laughs> uh anja you are in the air oh fucking lovely you are on the ground, Riley. <laughs> Shit. Okay. Oh, with my dice rolls, I'm totally gonna die. So what would you like to do, Merrick? Uh, All right, well, um, is it a, an action to, or a bonus action <laughs> to swap my weapons up? Uh, as part of a move, you can do that. Okay. Well, I'm going to get within... Throwing range, and I'm going to switch to that my new magic dagger, and I'm going to throw it up the dagger that's got Anja. See if I can hit it from here. Okay. Uh, is it considered in melee with Anja? It is considered in melee with uh, enough of you. This thing is. Huge. Yeah, I mean, it should be. All right. It, it is in melee with me, technically. Oh, sneak attack then. As you go to throw the dagger, one of these eyes blinks open and what? stares in your direction. Give me a constitution save. Oh, it's got oh, reactions. Dick! Uh -oh. It's probably his legendary actions, too. I think we found the end of the dungeon, guys. You said constitution? <laughs> constitution. Alright. Uh, seven? You take four dexterity damage. The body shit. starts to tighten up. The skin <gasps> becomes wrinkled. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, you may now continue with your attack if you like. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> it's minus two to attacks. It's minus two to damage. It's minus two to AC. <laughs> Thank God it's not minus two to sneak attack. No, it is not. Mm -hmm. Come on, dude, do this. All right. Blow everything that we have at this thing. So you said I do get advantage, though? Yes, you will. Okay. Uh, no, you wouldn't get advantage. It knows you're there. 
Um, but as would get the sneak attack if you hit. Yeah, but Does I... he get advantage as a small person attacking a large person? Is that how it works? I don't think that's a thing. <laughs> Is that a thing? I thought I thought little people had advantage on large creatures. No. Maybe not. All right. What'd you roll? So, um, I said I'm at minus two now. Yeah, minus above, two. over my normal. Mm -hmm. So, 16 to hit. 16. Okay. Uh, that just hits. Okay. Go ahead and roll your damage. Uh, and remember, there's a minus two after that, too. Oh my god. Sorry, I didn't write down the dagger damage. Hang on one second. I need to find D4 plus Dex or What'd you get? Is it is it one d four dex? Sorry. Oh, uh, yeah, one d four plus dex plus your um sneak attack damage. And my sneak attack is how much? Um, uh, 22. 22. Nice. Okay. Oh, wait. Okay. Uh... Okay. Uh, there's just one hand at the end of your turn. The dagger returns back to your hand unless you were using a different dagger. No, no. Okay. Cool. All right. Uh, Brand, we are up to you unless you want to do anything else, Merrick. Uh, nope. Okay. So, um, yeah. I have one high point left. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I have it. That's why I was asking if we had a short rest. <clears throat> You're fine. Don't worry. Not so really. I will uh, I'll attack it with an unarmed strike first. Okay. And uh, as you turn to look at it. No, I'm kidding. Uh, that's a 21 to hit. That'll hit. Four. Uh, eight bludgeoning damage. Okay. Does that seem to hurt it? Uh, no. <coughs> Not, yeah, I didn't uh, think so. Not as much as you'd think it would. Yep, not surprised. Oh, so I'm not, it, I don't have magics. It, uh, but it, it did I hurt did, it some, though. I did hit it, so I'll spend my last high point and I will need a constitution saving throw from you for stunning strike. <laughs> um, gosh, it's, it's my catch all right now. If this doesn't work, oh well the best option I got to try to help everyone. Well, that is going to be a 27. Okay, didn't, didn't think that would work, but I had to try. I, don't know, I will then strike it again. Okay. Uh, that'll miss with a 10, unless it's got an AC less than 10, or 10. Okay. And then bonus action, I'll try to strike it one, one more offhand. Okay. Or 16. 16 will hit. And this one will be 4 damage. 4 damage. Okay. Again, not doing as much damage as you would like. The uh, Unless you have anything else? And that is it. I am spent. I have no more Kai points. No healing except for potions. I was trying to hopefully stun it. <laughs> the golem 
uh, flies into battle. Yes. Literally with a leap. And as it smashes into the hard, scaly bones of this creature, it can't seem to find a mark on it. But you are last, Riley. So it takes a little while. Uh, that I thought us... I was before Anja. Not quite. Anja has gone yet. No, I, I rolled. I rolled. I rolled one before you. I'm. I'm. Fu- I'm totally mm-hmm. fucked. Yeah. Uh, so this rootling, this creature, son of a bitch, I did it again. Um, reaches out with two more tendrils, swings over at the golem. Uh, Thank fucking God we have that right now. <laughs> <laughs> With a 13 to hit, uh, uh, the golem manages to get out of the way. Uh, with a <coughs> 20 brand, does that hit you? Yes, it does. Okay. And whew, this is going to hurt. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, it does 15 bludgeoning damage to you. And you become grappled by the creature. Okay. Okay. Uh, and that brings us to you, Anja. Anja, you are grappled by this horrific thing. Fuck. I. <sighs> oh, um, I'm sorry. I got to describe the scene as we continue on. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to do. proceeds to buck the Cho Show Show gob- uh, Golem off of it, and the Golem flies into the wall where that nicer uh, door was, that door to the left before the curtain, uh, proceeding to break it open. uh, And with passive uh, perceptions, even as you fight this monster brand, you notice that the destruction um, seems to be spreading throughout, not just this room, but into other rooms as well. And then ah, you get whipped away. Okay, continuing on. Uh, Anja, we are to you. I, I feel like at the moment, cure wounds ain't going to do dilly and shit. It'll bring my hit points up, only to have them just all disappear again. So I think the best thing to do is probably just stab it. Uh, bonus action to put Slayer's Prey on it. Okay. And take two strikes because now I get two strikes a time. Oh, hey, um, before you do that, yeah. can you make a constitution saving throw for me? Oh, freaking hell. <laughs> freaking Kyle or freaking hell? Freaking, I said freaking hell. I'm okay with hell. either one, honestly. Oh, the, well, which kind? Const- yeah, 11. Constitution. Uh, saving throw, if I said. Yeah, no, no, that's oh, an 11. 11. That's yeah. not one of my primaries. Dex and strength are my primaries. You take uh, two dexterity damage. Why is it taking dexterity damage when it's, you know... Uh, I think incapacitate you. As you are uh, getting ready to attack it, just an eye starts to form. God damn it, why is it doing this? Ignore the rules, I'm trying to freaking change... Well, I was going to put that in there, but... Too late, too late. I can't ignore the rules. I like that. Okay, clear that. (laughs) Yeah, it rolled way better. All right, so... By an action, I'm going to make a couple. I'm going to make two hits with my mirror blade because that's magical. Mm -hmm. Well, that's pretty good though. Um, Dex does not go to my hit. So that's uh, the low number was 18. That'll hit. The high number was way higher, 24. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm rolling one, two, Three for Slayer's Prey, 3d6 plus eight. Come on. All right. All right. So uh, six, 10, 13 plus eight is 21. 21 damage. Points damage. Uh, from your mirror blade, correct? Yep. The All magic right. one. So I assume that does seem like it does something. Yeah, that does. Uh, uh, you cut into the tendril that's holding on to you. Uh, And you said 21? 21. Yeah, you managed to slice off 
that tendril. <gasps> you drop to the ground. Uh, if you want to... Eh, two damage. I'll make an acrobatics check. If I can. To sure, at least make ahead. it look good. So that's a 21 and an acro- acrobatics check. One damage. One damage. Yay, <laughs> because I'm at some so healthy right now. Mm-hmm. I don't know if Definitely. anybody, I know Brand's got no healing. just landing on the floor, oh. boom, you land on your feet and you, well, roll onto your feet and you can literally feel the floor itself is just shaking. Is, <laughs> we're Star Trekking over here. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> oh, I okay. know what I probably have to hit. Let's see. I'm trying to figure out what I have to change in D&D Beyond to do. Nope, that just rolls dice. How do you freaking change and put damage on your character for the ability? Uh, the only uh, thing you can do is... Character creator? <laughs> no, that's no. typically no, no, no. not a click. thing, so just make a note. No, 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 no. Right. There is a way to do it. There is uh, a way to do it. I'm click gonna... uh, at the top of your stat. Click the actual name of the stat. It'll bring up your stat, and then you can uh, hit oh, a modifier. Oh, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. Or you can override the stat. I All got right, it. There you go. Thank you very much. Or make a note of it. We're going to keep moving on in the meantime, and we'll fix it later if we need to. Um, that brings us to Riley. Uh, you are grappled as this thing has pressed you up against the floor. I, um, yeah, this is not a good uh, position I want to be in. <laughs> I don't like being grappled. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to, I don't know, look off to the side of the room preferably as far as away as possible and try and misty step as a bonus action. Sure. Uh, You can get all the way in the same room. Uh, You also can see where the uh, golem was thrown through and you could potentially be in a completely different room if you like. That doesn't sound dangerous. Yeah, let's go in the other room. I'm misty stepping to that doorway right behind the golem. (laughs) All right. Uh, you misty step, you find yourself uh, in a room. There's carpets on the floor, very finely. Um, bookshelves are knocked over. If you look behind you, there is a large circle with eldritch symbols uh, painted on the floor. Various um, uh, material components um, for spells spaced around Um and formulaic patterns. There's several books open before the circle. Um, and then there is a large wooden desk made again of this fine uh, jungle wood where a few items have uh, fallen off, but it just appears to be some stationary and stuff. And of course, the Shosho Golem is steadily getting to its feet. Uh, and the cracks in the walls in the ceiling this room is being affected by the creature, by this uh, seismic activity. Okay. Um, since I used a spell as a bonus, I, I can't use a spell as an action, right? That is Unless correct. it's a cantrip. Yep. yep. Well, I feel like what's going to happen in this room is going to mess with us later on. Um, or maybe it's what's messing with us now this circle um i wonder if i can help the party by disrupting this magic circle um i don't want to destroy it without looking at it first though uh la 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 well this is great um cool so i still have an action and i still have a movement so action and movement how far away is this circle on the ground with the books in front of it open and you can reach it if you want to move towards it I move towards. I move towards it. Okay. What would you like and, to do? And uh, do, 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 do. Uh, can I make like an our Yog Sothri check or something without using my action, or is that my action? Uh, you can use it uh, using your action if you're trying to discern what's going on here. It's going to need to be an Arcana check, and it's going to take your action. You're under a bit of stress. I am under a bit of stress, but I will take that action because mm-hmm. uh, I feel like it could potentially help. So 19, Arcana. 19. Oh, good. Um, yeah, you look at the symbols. Something here. You look down 
at the book laid out in front of it. There's dust. You wipe it off. This is to bind some sort of creature known as uh, a bayaki. Yaki? But it's yeah. not something you're familiar with. Oh, I'm not familiar <laughs> with a yaki? Well, that's great. Um, could I infer that the thing outside in the other room is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give me another Yogsothothri. Okay, cool. Because I'm I'm I'm, I'm your I'm your warlock here, man. Yeah, yeah. Um uh yeah, that wasn't so hot eleven for that, so maybe 11. not. Potentially. Potentially, but I don't Potentially, know. Potentially, yeah. So this is important. I probably shouldn't mess with it. Cool. That's good to know. Um, well, I'm going to set my tablet down on that book really quick, and then <laughs> that's my turn, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. That works. Uh, back to you, Merrick. I think you're the only... Ah, no, no, no. You're good. Yeah. Uh, Merrick, what are you doing? You see Anja has cut herself off the floor, rolled onto her feet. Uh, the ground is shaking beneath you, Star Trek style. Um, Riley has vanished in a puff of brimstone uh, not brimstone, uh, uh, and has disappeared off somewhere. You're not quite certain where. Um, and then Bran is being flung around by this creature. What would you like to do? Um, you say Bran's still being grappled by it? Yes. All right. Um, am I close enough to hit anything with melee? Yeah, you could swing with melee if you like. Okay. Now, here's the question. You realize that when you attacked it last time, you were looking at it and it looked at you. You may risk that again if you look at it. You might want to avert your gaze, but that will give you disadvantage to hit. But you're not at risk of becoming a mummy. Yeah, and I kind of need dexterity. Oh, all my stats. <laughs> Whatever. So I'll right. say you know what's going on a little bit more. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I will uh, avert my eyes and take a swing. That's 2d20s, take the lowest. That's right. Oh, okay. But doesn't he just hit since it's a mirror blade that hit this turn? No, well, he's the one who's going first, so uh, Anja is the one who benefits from it. He has to, he has to oh. use the ability oh, for that right. to happen, anyways. I, right. I was the last on the turn. I thought, didn't yeah. Merrick had an initiative of three or? Oh, Merrick I was first. is uh, 23. 23. Yeah, 23. Oh, yes. so yeah, no, I am Merrick's, last on the turn. Yeah, you're last. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Now it makes more sense. But I don't Merrick, know why I had but, 23 in my notes. Or but three Merrick, in my yeah, notes. if Merrick's using the, the mirror blade, then that will. Oh, how does yeah. that work with disadvantage? If I'm not looking at it either. You take the results. I guess I just get the result, right? So. Yeah, you get whatever the yeah. result is. And I still get to add my bonus, though, too, right, though? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, then yeah, so uh, 18. 18, that'll hit. Okay. I like this blade a lot. <laughs> and it's one decent. I don't get... Once you learn the trick of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, it's, it's pretty amazing, actually. Uh, <laughs> seven, seven damage. Seven damage, okay. I'm probably going to be dead. I'm probably going to be down this round, though. I don't have much hit points. Um, I'll go ahead and in my other hand, I've got my dagger. I'll swipe at it with my second attack. All right. Also at disadvantage here. Mm -hmm. Oof. Uh, nine. No. Seven. <coughs> nine to hit or 11 seven. to hit? Seven. Seven. Uh, yeah, that misses. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh, Bran, you're being swung through the air. What would you like to do? I will attempt an acrobatic check to escape. All right. Go ahead. I will do that one for seven. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, you are just held tight, man. Uh, that's my turn. 
All right, we go back to the show show. Golem. Come on, damn it, Golem, do something. There you go. I believe that is. Uh, once more, it flies through the air. This time, it starts stabbing with those bone spurs. Let me see if that is. Bone spur. Uh-huh. Bone storm. And it is. Yeah, okay. And it just proceeds to jab it into its fleshy part, causing the monster to scream, flail its head around a little bit. (coughs) But you also see whatever kind of acidic uh, um, uh, punctures uh, that this creature has been doing damage seems to just leak out of the creature not doing uh, uh, very much damage at all, unfortunately. Okay. Which leads us to the monster's turn! Oh, boy. Uh, We have a 24 and a 15. Uh, 24, it slams the golem into the ceiling again. Like a smaller creature on its back, like Andre the Giant smashing someone on his back against a rock wall, doing considerable amount of damage to it. Oh, poor thing. And you can kind of see where these stitches are kind of coming loose. This purple uh, smog is coming out of it. And the 15 did not hit. And only one of you has grappled this turn, so... It slams into the golem again, just kind of rearing back twice. <laughs> Thank God. Oh, gosh. And at this point, uh, yeah, it just flings the golem again. Earth um, begins to shatter down. And the, uh, the, the, the tendril pulls itself back into the ceiling. Bran, you (gasps) drop 30 feet. Uh, Are you at that monk level yet? Uh, I do believe I have so far, but I don't think I have any Kai. I think I might have to spend that. Let me just check. Yep. So far. Nope, I just reduced damage. Uh, uh, Falling damage, you take uh, so I reduce it by 25 feet. So I only, five, I only follow five, so there should be none. I think it just reduces damage by 25. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, you're right. It just does reduce Which, damage by yeah, 25. No, you fall down. Um, yeah, a stone actually falls down from the ceiling with you, and you manage to put a foot on there and manage to push off safely, landing <coughs> on the ground. Um, you look up at the ceiling there's no actual hole where the creature was rather just broken up stones and it is almost silent except for um, the sounds of rocks tumbling, walls breaking you hear glass shattering in the other room but it is not your turn at the moment. Anja, you are up uh, so it disappeared. It did. And the temple is falling apart. And the temple is falling apart. So it's time to get the fuck out of here. Uh, action. My action is going to be to friggin' heal myself. Okay. <laughs> be, I have 10 hit points, folks. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for being merciful and not killing me in that round because it would have been so easy to do so. All right, so I'm making a cure wound. Sure, Frank is going, cut, damn it. Yeah, Frank is probably swearing. He wanted to see if he could get. Uh, that's not bad. 10 plus 2 is 12 points back. And then... Um, yeah, Frank is going, boo. Yeah, he's saying, boo. <laughs> you couldn't probably TP. Well, probably not, because, you know, Riley fucked off. Uh, all right, so I cast the second, my other second little spell. Oh, wait, no, that was the only second little spell. 
So, uh, all right. Um, and then I want to move, but I don't want to leave people behind. So um, I'm going to wait, but I'm going to like, we need to leave now. I'll say that. Okay. As you all gather in. Oh, wait. Small- Wait, wait, I actually, it's a bonus. Oh, wait, no, I can't do that. Never mind. I can't cast two spells in a round. Yeah, leveled spells. <laughs> Shit. Okay. Uh, Riley, you are in this uh, laboratory fancy office. Um, part of the book that you've placed the tablet on is uh, eaten away. There is... In this particular room, after that bout with the golem, which you may not have really been paying attention to, a large crack opens up on the opposite end of this um, circle painted on the floor. So maybe there was something bound already, is, and it's getting out? Can I do I worry about that? Does my anxiety kick on in? I consider that all possibility. <laughs> okay, on the wall opposite. Okay, wall on the opposite. Wall, a crack, a fissure opens up. Um, but not necessarily whatever it is. If you had a pretty good arcana check last time. So yeah, I will say you notice that the circle has been smudged. So something was potentially summoned here, bound here, and then released. Oh, maybe I maybe I helped the other room. Maybe maybe that was me. I'm gonna take credit for that. Um, sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> cool. Well, now that I hear that it quieted down and the circle smudged, I am going to infer that I did that, whether I'm right or not. And I'm like, oh, cool. Now I can take my time. And uh, now that I'm in the room and I look around. What else seems cool in here, book-wise, like important, like close to the desk? You said there was parchments. So, what what are those parchments and and things near the desk? Notes and stationery. So I glance at a couple that are on top to to get a gist of what it's talking about. Let's see. You find. Uh, give me a perception check. Okay. Perception. Do, 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 do. I'm having a rough time. It's alphabetical. Why is this so hard? All right, 19. 19, good. You find a note, and I'm going to have to look. Uh, Ghouls have been fortified and agreed to aid the ascension in exchange for adequate provisions and free passage above. Otherwise, okay. the only thing that really stands out other than the stationary um, is a toy wooden uh, uh, horse on the desk as well. Um, all right. So really quickly, I glance back at that tablet. Mm-hmm. How is it doing on that book? Is it done yet? Away at it. It's, it's not done yet. Yeah. By the start of your next turn, it'll be done. All right. Then I walk back over there and I scoop up the two together so I don't okay. interrupt the process. Sure. And then no and then I, I stack it on top of the parchments on the table. <laughs> so after it's done with the book, <laughs> it'll work through the parchments and then I'm going to the books on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> of that okay. toy horse interests me a lot less than books. Um, okay even though it's probably important. All right. My character cares about books. I think that's going to fill out your space. Um, yeah, it's my turn. Eric, that's it. <laughs> you are up again. Uh, the creature has disappeared. You have no idea where it's gone. Um, people are telling you it's time to get out of there. Is, is the room still collapsing as far as I can tell? It is. Roll an intelligence check. Intelligence. And actually, I have got to make a roll myself because I might be killing you here soon. Oh, okay. Uh, 19. What? Huh? 19. This room is going to collapse. This temple is going to collapse with you inside of it if you do not find a way out of here. 
Okay. Well, I'm going to book it towards the entrance that we came in. Uh, it is bare. Oh, that's, that's blocked, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And let me oh, roll it. Maybe check. the only opening is in the room I'm in, where that just opened up in the wall opposite me. All right. Too bad someone's busy trying to grab the place. <laughs> I'm okay. just getting the knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, <laughs> this is what my patron told from them. This is what my patron told me to do. This is my mission. It is not wrong. He's pirating. Uh, I mean, it, it actually absorbs the books. Like, it doesn't leave the information. It's not a photocopy. It absorbs. So those books are gone, and the parchment is gone when this is done. It's it's basically like... Okay, so you are stealing. Okay. I, so, I am to, I'm totally taking this info. <laughs> so then, yeah, the only other exit I can see is through the doors, through the doors, right? Yeah, you can see uh, where the golem had been thrown through previously. Uh, you can see the large room. Um, yeah, and if you start looking in there, you can see Riley running back and forth across the room. Okay, well, I'm going to go that way then. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, you are not exhausted, I believe. You're just short-legged. Um, yeah, exactly. But you, you notice that there is a small crack on the opposite side of the wall. You are small enough to fit through there. And that's the only exit to the room, I'm assuming, besides the one I came through? That appears to be the only exit to the room. All right. I guess I'll... Uh... No, I I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait for the rest of the for Anja and Bran, Bran to catch up. Okay. Bran, you are up. Uh, and yeah, no, continue. I will go to the open door and look inside. So I see crack? this library, the crack, mm -hmm. all that jazz. Mm -hmm. I do not see a clear exit. There's a crack. It's big enough for Merrick. It is not big enough for you. Yeah, so I do not see a clear exit. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to head to the door to, let's say, our my left as I go down the hallway. Because there's the hallway, there's the two doors that lead to the opposite sides. Mm -hmm. Those are not caved in. That is caved in. Both of them? So all three exits are caved in? This front room that was there is what collapsed. Okay. Uh, all right, I'll head back and I will look and I will just say, Merrick, save yourself. Somebody has to get out of here. Oh, so the, I'm trapped in this room. Is this what's actually happening? I misunderstood if that's the case. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the larger creatures could not fit is... through this crack. No, no, no. When you said there was a crack in the opposite wall, I, I just assumed that like this was the exit to this place we were no. in. Not the, you no. were trying to get to the place exit. I'm at. It's not your exit. Hey, uh, hey Riley, how yeah. many Misty Step spells do you have? <laughs> One more. Shit. I only, I'm a warlock. I have very few spell slots, but they are powerful spell slots. Yeah, I know, because that would be the answer. You take some with me. We needed two to take two of us with it, and it's then Mary could have gone through the door. Uh, I mean, yeah. don't you guys have like added man pickaxes or something? I, don't know. I do, I just, but we don't have time to friggin' go. I don't think we have time for that, do we? Well, I have time to leave. Did you have so time to do anything not... else? <laughs> <laughs> I guess argue. So, yeah, that is my turn. I tell Merrick to save himself. Okay. The Maybe. golem spins in circles, uh, destroyed leg, destroyed arm, walking around trying to figure out where this creature is. Uh, the creature comes back. 
and I am going to need a strength saving throw from Bran, from Merrick. Uh, and I think we'll do the golem as well. 16. Not bad. You're good? Yes. 10. Ten. Uh, you get tossed to the floor as this thing bursts from the ground. Um and knocks you down onto your feet. The golem manages to keep its feet as well. Uh, and just from the sheer impact of it coming and breaking forth from the wall, Bran, with your passive perception, the crack is wide. And you could probably oh, squeeze clever. it now at this point. Unfortunately, uh, it gets to attack. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Starting with, oh, actually, I got the golem first. Uh, so we will start with him, actually. Oh that my man. god, I'm glad yes. I tossed up the heel. Okay, that does damage. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, that is going to be two natural 20s. Jesus, on the golem? On the golem. Oh. I'm going to be nice to you guys. Yeah, you are, I'm actually, well, you'll find <laughs> out later in just a bit. The golem is crushed. Just immediately, the body of it smashes flat. Problem the golem solved. Is a puddle. <laughs> and it reaches up and goes after. You're the one who did something wrong, Riley. Oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> But a 13, a 3 on the die does not get you, correct? Oh, wait, do I have advantage because you didn't know it was there? No, I'm kidding. Um, And that is its turn. Anja, you are up. So it made a crack in the wall big enough to get through? The crack is large enough to get through. All right, I'm going to move... I'm going to blow very, both my actions. So I'm doing a dash action as well as a, to move basically 30 feet, 30, 30 feet. Oh, there you are. And try to get into that, try to go. Yeah, it's not going to That I'm is sl- a three sl- on the die, 13 to hit you. You miss. Oh my God. And the circle on the floor <laughs> is turned to churning stone. Okay. The that circle on the floor a... starts churning stone? Is that what you it's said? Turned to churning stone. As in it Turn slams in. and the stone cracks and breaks and just is no more. Ah. No. Okay. That gives us to you, Riley. You're at the desk. You're grabbing all of this information you gathered. You gathered some of it. You could keep going if you wanted to. Or you could try and make for this exit. This but it exit. is clear that this is not a good place to be. <laughs> but I but I, I hear like them trying to get in the crack behind me, right? Um from this desk. Uh, yeah, if you were behind the desk, you could literally watch them crack in. Uh, yeah, you have a good enough perception. I think you'd notice that. Okay, cool. Yeah, then I still have plenty of time until all three of them get through. So I'm going to keep looting. <laughs> 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 I, like, think, I think I'm beyond the point of caring what you do. So Yeah, I I'm just, waiting I on will, you, Anja. I'll I help you through. I, I fucking well, I will buy I already went by you, I think. Wait, did you? Yeah, you made. Yes. I went by him. I was like, "We're leaving," and I looked at the other two Whoa. and I ignored so you. So you made it through the crack. I made it into the crack. I don't know Which if thirty is... feet gets me through. It. I'm on the other side of the crack, aren't I? Or I totally no, misunderstand come... this situation. No, though. we're coming through the <laughs> Riley, room. Riley, you're in the room. The creature just attempted to attack you. It missed you with the thirteen. Anja went because the crack got bigger when the creature arrived again. She is at least in the crack, maybe through the crack. Maybe she's part of the crack. We don't know. So the creature came into the laboratory room where I was at. Yes. 
Oh shit! Okay, I thought the creature came back into the room where you guys were all at. Still, no. on um, it's a like, monster. With the room it can with go anywhere it wants. <laughs> Yeah, Actually, but that's I, I, where that's what I'm saying. That's where you guys were at with the well, golem. And since the uh, golem got attacked, I thought it was over there. It's and all over the place. Over. It's everywhere. I, I, I oh, actually okay. wait, wait, Kyle, clarify something for me just so I know. Did it did it make an attack of opportunity against me with that 13? It yes. Did. Yeah, that's what I thought. It was because well, I Well, there's I two 13s. Oh, it's two 13s. Yeah, okay. like thir- Don't remind me. I'm, I'm trying to kill one of you. So, so let let me understand. So Merrick's in the lab with me. Anja's Eric's in the lab. crack in the lab. Anja's in the crack. Yeah. I believe, Bran, you are also in the lab. I'm at the door. Yeah. So, okay. okay. Now. And something swung down at you and missed you. <laughs> but he was too absorbed in the books to notice. <laughs> Potentially. You're just oh. like, oh, wait, is that a. Whoosh. Yeah, because the, the bookshelf <laughs> is knocked over and I'm looking at all the books on the ground, pocketing mm-hmm. any that look interesting. Um. So do I notice that it attacked me now that it finally swung out? I would at say me? it is in the room with you. It takes up a massive amount of space. Uh, honestly, this thing is so big. It's partially in this room, partially probably in the other room as well. But okay, it can the room reach out from. to grab you. Yeah. Oh, man. Wait, did you, uh, do you look at it? I mean, I don't know. Do I? I, I mean, I, I need to totally reevaluate what I'm doing. I totally thought I was in this room waiting for everyone uh, able to no, get through a crack not. to get yeah, into no. the same room with no, me. No, no, I, I totally, I totally understand that I was previously wrong, but I'm saying sure. that's what I thought was the case. So I'm very confused and I have to orient myself. What is your passive perception? Okay. Okay. Um, 15. 15. You notice the crack gets wider. You are aware that the building the temple is coming down okay the creature is now in the same room with you you have multiple sources of danger so it's the question of are you more interested in saving as much information gathering as much information as possible or are you interested in being able to use what you have and get out yeah i understand that like um me staying alive probably Mm -hmm. means that i'm gonna be able to collect more data Mm. in the long run um so uh if the tablet is done or not with the books or parchments i don't care i'm gonna whatever is there if it's still working on it i'm scooping it all up Mm -hmm. (laughs) together okay um i don't know if that's an action or a bonus and then i'm probably move call it a move to scoop up that okay yeah um and then do I see any light on the other side of the crack that Anja's working through or? You do not. Oh, so I don't see that space over there at all. Like I, I get what I'm trying to get is I can't like misty step now. Oh, you I can misty stuff. step past Anja if you like. Okay. And just make it on the other side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then that's probably what I'm going to do then. Okay. Um, all right. That's my spell slots and I'm misty stepped out with my tablet and mm-hmm. whatever's remaining. All right, Bran, you are up. Um, I will go next to Merrick and literally chuck him in because I know he's slower than I am. What's on my butt? Yeah. So I will literally like just kind of do the heave and then toss him into the crack. Okay. Uh, athletics, I'm assuming. Yeah, that sounds good. All right, 16. Yeah. Merrick, you are back on your feet, and you are at the edge of the crack with Anja. Um, that is an action. Um, Bran, as you are, I am assuming, you're going to try and make your way to the crack. Mm-hmm you hear the call of a very familiar bird. And if you look, there is a raven perched atop a toy horse sitting on the desk. I will move and take the toy horse. Um, do I see anything else on the desk, desk of interest? 
Uh, it has been ramshackled through. Dirt is falling from the ceiling. That reminds me. Oh, I'm sorry, Merrick. I skipped over you. Oh, I was wondering about that. That, yeah, no. <laughs> Merrick, um, I didn't need to are tell you. Are you attacking the <laughs> creature or are you running, Merrick? I'm going to get up and then yep. uh, I'm going to I'm going to bolt. I'm going to run into the crack. Okay. Yeah, you are into gone. the crack. You are good. Bran, maybe you help that along as we're going through. It was a nice roll. That's anyway, no. you can help me. You got to push me further. There you go. Because I'm slow. Um, Hold on. Yes. But what I am supposed to be doing right now, sorry. I'm not sorry. I don't care. Uh. Oh, yeah. Any creature beginning its turn. Uh, Dexterity saving throw. Uh, Merrick. Shit. As rocks tumble down from the ceiling. Rocks fall over and die? <laughs> oh, uh, that's the trick of the campaign. You thought it was going to be Cthulhu who'd get you. Nope, but it's rocks. It's a cat. It's a cat. <laughs> uh, 17. 17. You pass. Uh, you take seven points of bludgeoning damage as rocks begin to fall from the ceiling. Uh, I went up level saving seven. throw as well. Seven. Seven. Okay. Uh, gosh, you are going down. That is going to be 13 points of bludgeoning damage. I am still up. Oh, good. I have 20 hit points. I'm down to seven. <laughs> okay. Actually, uh, ah, oh, no, that's an attack. Never mind. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can deflect it, but that's not going to work. Fortunately not. Um, so you grab the horse. The desk is covered in rocks. That point where you just kind of stop to grab this horse. Do I see the stationary? Stationary is gone. All right. I go. Okay. The last thing you see as you leave, whether it's just a glance back at someone something you had a connection with that viscous purple smog that had been drained from all of you you see as it leaves the golem's frame and starts making its way in your direction However, being a cloud, it doesn't move very far, but it goes through cracks over rocks, leaving this trail behind it, this greasy, slimy trail. And that brings us to the monster in question. It uh, zips back into the earth again, but without making an actual tunnel. It just kind of... And I think I'm going to assume people start running out of the room at that point. Oh, yeah. Anja, I am, however, going to ask you to, you can go ahead and give me advantage. An advantage what check? Dexterity <laughs> saving throw. Not quite as good as it was. You're not quite in the room, but you're close. Oh enough. my God. Terrible. Terrible. In both cases, I rolled two threes. Nice. So that's a, that's a friggin' eight. Acrobatics one. That's still an eight. Same no, no, number. it's not. Uh, you take eight points of bludgeoning damage. All right, I'm okay. Okay. And I think that leaves... Oh, Riley, you are already in the tunnel. You are safe from any falling damage. I assume you're going to keep running. And the temple behind all of you collapses. 
You continue running, moving as quickly as you can. The earth is shifting underneath your feet. There's this damp, acrid smell from various cracks. Every once in a while, there's this of air that just kind of whoom, spins you on your on your feet there for a second before the person behind you shoves you forward. There's room enough for one, just a single file line, and the heat just kind of grows and grows behind you at your back until eventually you spring forth. There's a light water and you spring out of this hole in the ground. Oh my God. Into an opening. The moon is in the sky, shining down, lighting up what looks to be this kind of bubbling oasis. And you have managed to escape the temple of Fatnathoa. Yeah! <laughs> I am sorry we went long here tonight, guys, uh, but I thought, you know, you guys were getting a little bit too much enjoyment from being in there, and I was just tired of doing that. Um, that is where we will end tonight's session. Um, gosh, just go through it again. Uh, follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our YouTube archives. If you want to hit us up, you can do that at Twitter or at Discord or at mhoboinc at gmail.com especially if you want to try and get into one of our one shots next week we have calamity campaign remix going on this saturday and margu going on sunday uh before more fun stuff continues on the following week i forgot to mention we do have murder hobocon taking place the 12th the 13th badges are still on sale but i could be a liar uh by the time you listen to this uh and i don't care just do that on twitter i'm not on there to hear you call me a liar uh thanks to our sponsors pirate dog dice uh adventure sense uh, uh for all their wonderful products for helping me roll wonderful dice to hit all these people although having an overpowered monster certainly helps with all that uh make sure you give them a check out also check out threadless and podbean if you want to get some awesome merchandise, whether it's cred or not, uh, or just listen to a podcast without looking at any of our faces, or you can just uh, uh, expand brands image to cover the rest of us. And then you're also <laughs> not looking at anyone's face. Uh, just, just absolute creepiness. Oh, <laughs> uh, Riley, you always add the fun stuff there. Don't you? Um, other than that, guys, go ahead and wave at the camera, and we will figure out what's happening to you guys in a couple of weeks from now. Oh, boy. Good night.